In this video, we want to take a look at some of the calculations with the margin of error for population proportions. So again, let's do the algebra. Now, if you, if you suck at algebra, if you hate algebra, you can sort of just skip to the next slide because I'm going to take you through the math on how we find just the n equals equation. So if you're satisfied that we didn't make an error, then you can just move forward. But again, mathematically, we're trying to get n by itself, and I can't do that because it's inside the square root bracket. But I don't want to square everything yet. I want to get the square root by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take each side divided by z of alpha over 2. And because on the right side of the equation, that's going to make it go away. So just for the sake of room, I'm going to write my result over here. e divided by z of alpha over 2 is equal to the square root of p hat 1 minus, whoops, 1 minus p hat over n. And if you want to use q hat instead of 1 minus p hat, you may. Now what I want to do is square everything because I need to get rid of the square root. So I'm essentially left with e z alpha over 2 squared equals p hat q hat over n. Notice I've switched to the q hat instead of 1 minus p hat. I'm now going to multiply by n on each side. That's going to give me n times this whole thing. And the n's are going to obviously go away. And then I'm going to take each side times z, whoops. So instead of dividing by a fraction, I'm going to take it times z alpha over 2 over e squared on each side. And that leaves me with my equation because now everything here has canceled. So I have n equals p hat q hat, or if you're more comfortable, 1 minus p hat, and then z alpha over 2 divided by e quantity squared. So this is the function that I'm going to use. So notice again, that's exactly what I have here. And now the question says, what's the minimum sample size needed for a 99% confidence interval for the population proportion if previous studies indicated p is approximately 0.54 and we desire no more than a 2% margin of error. So let's talk about where I magically came up with all of the numbers that I'm using. First number is p is 0.54. So that's going to go in for p hat. And then of course I'm going to take 1 minus 0.54 to get 0.46 or just leave it as 1 minus 0.54 for 1 minus p hat or q hat. Now the only thing, I'm sorry, before I look at the last one, let's look at the 2%. That's our e. So 2% is 0 0.02. Notice that's what the e value is. And then therefore the big question becomes where did 2.575 come from? And that came from the critical value. So this, because we're looking at a 99% confidence interval, remember that means 99% is here. That means 0 0.005 is here and 0 0.005 is here. So that makes this value 0.995. Hopefully you're getting the hang of that by now because we're doing it a lot. So this value came from, uh, sorry, norm S inverse of 0 0.995. So that's where this value came from. And then notice I went straight from this whole thing to the answer. And that was on purpose because students often try to find 0.54, then find 0.46, and then find whatever this is, and they round it down. And then they use that rounded value to find a rounded solution, and they round it again. So don't round till you get to the end of the question. And then always round up. When we're looking for a sample size, we always round up. So approximately 4,118 needs to be our sample size. This last question has several parts. So this is really a good test question to see how you're understanding the material. 
Uh, the first question is exactly like the question that we just did. And then B and C sort of just make sure that you understand the whole process. So I'm not going to read the question to you. If you would, press pause, try this question, as many parts as you're able to do, and then press play to see how you did. So for the first question, what we're looking for is how large of a sample. So again, we're just going to plug in what we know. And what we know is that the margin of error, or E, is going to be 0 0.03. Um, C is 0 0.85, and that's going to help us with that um, critical value. So we'll need it for that critical value. And then we're going to be using P as 0.21. So again, using Excel to find the critical value using the 85% level of confidence, we find uh, 1.44, and then plugging it into that equation that we had found together, we get 382.23. Now recall, normally we would not round this up. We would say 382, but because we're dealing with sample size, we always round up. So the minimum sample size is 383. The next question says, okay, suppose we take N is 383. One of these student, of these students, 84 read at or below the eighth grade level. So that's X. This is N. Using this information, compute the sample proportion of all 10th graders reading at or below the eighth grade level. So hopefully you can see that what we're going to do is find P hat. P hat is X over N. X is 84. N is 383 because that's what we found it to be. Um, when we said what the minimum sample size needs to be. So now we get 0.219321. Again, don't round it. The last question says construct the interval. So we just found p hat. Remember p hat minus e and p hat plus e is what we're going to be doing. We already found the z star, um, I'm sorry, the critical value a lot of people call it Z star or Z of alpha over two, remember was 1.44. So really that's what we're doing is we're finding the margin of error using the actual value that we just found, the P hat value that we just found and one minus P hat. So notice we're not using 0.21, we're using our observed value, our 383 and our 1.44 to find the critical, I'm sorry, to find the margin of error and then our observed p hat minus the margin of error and plus the margin of error. So it's really putting together everything from section 8.4. So what can we say? The State Education Commission can be 85% confident that the proportion of 10th grade students in the state who read at or below the 8th grade level is between 18.9% and 25%. Coming up next, we are going to take a look at two samples. So all of the things that we just learned in chapter eight, where we're learning about means where sigma is known or where sigma is unknown um, and proportions, all of those things we're going to do again, and we're actually gonna throw one more in there, paired data, which is dependent data. But really, as long as you understand the basics of chapter eight, chapter nine is going to go much more smoothly for you. So if you aren't solid on chapter eight yet, please go back and do some more practice before you move on to chapter nine.